Hey, how's it going guys? I hope this video finds you well as always. In today's video, we are going to talk about uh, components of DNA. So uh, the objective for this specific video, there's two uh, objectives for this topic. The first one is to uh, identify the components of DNA and describe how information for specifying the traits of an organism is carried in DNA. The second objective is to recognize that components that make up the genetic code are common to all organisms. Now, it can be a lot of information here, but what I've done is I've put it into four uh, statements that you should be able to answer by the time that we finish this lecture. So by the time that you will finish with this lecture, uh, you should be able to do these things. I can tell you that DNA determines traits. Okay, you should be able to do that. To be able to I can tell you that all organisms have DNA the next one is I can recognize the parts and structure of DNA and that's going to be key you need to be able to identify those parts and structure of DNA and then the last one is to I can pair the four nitrogenous bases correctly so a with T and G with C we're going to talk about this four um, statements here uh, by the end of this class or by the end of this lecture you should be able to know all four of these things okay uh, the first one is what is dna well uh, this goes together with this sentence that i can tell you that dna determines traits well we're going to start with what is it dna is a nucle uh, nucleic acid if you remember when we talked about biomolecules well one of the four biomolecules is nucleic acids and dna is a nucleic acid. Uh, the function is the, to uh, be the genetic material inside the nucleus of eukaryotic cells. Well, keep in mind that eukaryotes have a nucleus and that is where the DNA is going to be found, but prokaryotes do not have a nucleus, uh, but they do have DNA as well. Right? Uh, what is a function to store the genetic information? that tells the cell which proteins to make and there's also responsible for determining all organisms traits another word for traits is characteristics okay so it is responsible for determining the characteristics of an organism good example here we have just one characteristic whether a person is short versus tall now dna will be the information Okay, inside of the cells that are going to tell the cells specifically what proteins to make. And those proteins will determine the characteristics or traits of a person. In this case, the trait uh, are going to be whether the person has a shorter statue or a taller statue. Okay. Uh, another example is if a person has uh, brown eyes versus green eyes. Well, there's a section of the DNA that will produce a specific type of protein that will code for a trait that tells the cell, that tells the body, okay, well, you're gonna be, you're gonna have green eyes or brown eyes. Um, the last example I can tell you is skin color. That's a perfect example. Well, there's a section in DNA that tells the skin cells specifically the skin cells what proteins to make and those proteins are just going to have different uh, colorations they're going to have different pigmentation different color and that's what gives you the trait for your skin color okay uh, the next thing is what organisms have dna well all living things are going to have dna remember eukaryotes they have a nucleus they're going to be, the DNA is going to be found there. Prokaryotes, on the other hand, do not have a nucleus, but they do have DNA. All living things, bacteria, fungi, uh, protista, animals, plants, all living things, fungi, you name it, it has DNA inside of it. Okay, so all living things have DNA. Uh, what shape does DNA have? Okay, well, the shape of DNA, this is when we enter the specific parts and structure of it uh, the shape of a dna is a double helix how is it a double helix well 
Think about a, la a ladder. Ladder has two sides to it, right? The left side and the right side. So the ladder is connected by uh, steps. Well, this is why we say that DNA is double, has two sides. Now, to be a helix is where I'm going to draw it down here. Helix means that it is twisted, like a twisted ladder. So the same ladder you twist it around, and that makes this shape like the double helix. Okay, that's what we mean by double helix. So if you don't have that picture in your notes, make sure that you write this down, you draw it, so you can remember it is a double helix, two sides that are twisted. Next, we have the different parts of the structure and the sides of the ladders, your uh, backbone is going to be the sugar and the phosphate. And this is where they're found. You have phosphate here and a sugar. They're all connected to one another and that makes the sides or the backbone of DNA. Here you have this one. And then on the other side, you have the other one on the right side. I want you to notice one thing. Notice how these sugars right here are pointing into that direction. Okay, this is pointing that direction. Now notice here, it's pointing in the opposite direction, and we say that uh, DNA, uh, the two sides of the ladders, are going to run in opposite directions. Okay, just something to keep an eye for. Um, forgot to mention the inside the steps of your ladder they're going to be made of nitrogenous bases okay and that's what the steps of the ladders inside in the middle are going to be made of um well what are those parts called the parts uh, dna is a long molecule made of repeating monomers called nucleotide now what is a nucleotide it is the three different parts right here we have a phosphate that's part number one a sugar part number two, and a base. Those three parts together, all attached together, they're going to make a nucleotide. Okay, so those three, all attached together are a nucleotide. That's what we call the monomer. Here we have another nucleotide. Then we have another nucleotide right here. Here on this side, we're going to have a nucleotide which starts here. And all of this right here is a nucleotide. Whoops. I know went backwards there, hmm? kind of lost the image, but you can tell now this is another nucleotide right here. Okay, your nucleotide right there. This side, you have some nucleotides. All of those nucleotides, they're going to join together to form your two sides of the DNA. Okay, you call those a nucleotide. Each of them is a nucleotide. Um, what are the uh, nucleotides made of, or what are they going to? Uh, be connected by well, we're going to be connected. They're going to be held together by covalent bonds. So these three parts: your phosphate, which is this one, is where phosphorus is found. Sugar or pentose sugar, which means that it has five sides. That's what pentose means. Pentose means that it has five sides. O's is sugar, and then you have your nitrogenous base in the middle. All three of those parts are going to be held together through these bonds which we call covalent bonds the only thing that you need to remember about this type of bonds is that they're really 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 strong okay they're so strong that it's very difficult to separate these three parts from one another uh, there's a good question the diagram uh, in the diagram what substance is represented by the letter X. So you have the letter X right here. Make sure that you answer that question. The answer is C. It is the phosphate. So you have a phosphate, you have a sugar, here you have another phosphate. These are the backbones. And then in the middle, you have the, um, uh, the steps of the ladder, which are the nitrogenous bases. But that X is a phosphate. Right? Uh, now, what are the Nitrogenous spaces, you, we are going to have uh, four different nitrogenous spaces. So DNA has the four different nitrogenous spaces. Two of them are going to be called adenine, which is going to be represented with an A, and thymine, which is represented with a T. Then we have cytosine with a C, 
and guanine with a G. Oh, those are the four nitrogenous bases, only four of them, that are going to be present in DNA. And these are what they are going to look like. Two of them are smaller, cytosine and thymine are smaller. However, adenine and guanine are a little bigger. How are they going to pair together? Now, there's a rule that you have to remember. A will pair with T, or adenine pairs with thymine. Then guanine will pair with cytosine. Now, if you had a T, what are you going to pair with? Obviously, you're going to pair with A. Now, if you have a C on this side, then you're going to pair that C with a G. So A pairs with T, like G pairs with C. How can you remember that? You can remember at Golden Corral. The A with the T, and then the G with the C. Okay, there's other ways to remember, but this is the best way that I can remember off at Golden Corral. Uh, there's another one also, apple in the tree, car in the garage. Uh, but I just prefer this one. Okay. Uh, this is just some question. Make sure that you uh, write in your notes what are going to be these parts. Uh, stop the video and make sure that you answer it. C is going to pair with G. You have A on this side. That's going to pair with T. Then on this side, G pairs with C. Another T here is going to pair with A. And then finally, C will pair with G. Okay. Uh, what holds nitrogenous bases together? Well, this is another type of bond. Now, these right here, like we mentioned, okay, these are going to be the covalent bonds. However, the two bases are going to be held together by hydrogen bonds. So the A and the T here and the G and the C are going to be held by hydrogen bonds and this is important hydrogen bonds are very weak type of bond that it makes it very easy for any protein to come in and separate the two of them so remember these are strong bonds these right here the hydrogen bonds are very very weak um, what about other organisms all organisms have dna that is made up of the same four nitrogenous bases all organisms it is what we call the common language of DNA. Every single organism on this planet has the same four nitrogenous bases. The difference is the uh, way that they are arranged uh, together. Okay, so the human genome, for instance, the humans, uh, we have billions of these uh, nitrogenous bases, billions of A's, bill uh, millions of C's, and millions of T's, and millions of G's. Um, but if you were to compare yourself to, uh, for instance, a tiger, the tiger will also have those bases, but they're going to be arranged in a different way. So all organisms, the four uh, nitrogenous bases, are going to be common to every single living thing on this planet. The difference is the way that they are arranged. So it's kind of like a language, and I like to use this slide to explain to you that it kind of works like a language. Uh, DNA is language and it has only four letters uh, for alphabets all organisms use the same four letters to make different words which are going to be called, we're going to call genes so if you had tca agc ata aaa gct tcg those are going to be different uh, per se words different words together all together they're going to make sentences and they're going to have a meaning so the order of the words the order of the letters are going to have are going to make a word which all together makes a sentence and that's going to have a meaning okay and to put into this um, genetic information order of dna basis atcg makes a gene a gene makes a protein and the protein makes traits Right. Uh, this is just an example that I have here. I want you to compare humans to chimps to orangutans, cow, dog, uh, rat. Notice the bases. Uh, for the most part, they're very similar, but in some places they're going to be different. Okay. As you go walk down the line, the rat obviously going to have a lot more differences to the human than the chimp. All right. So I'm going to stop it here, guys. I hope that uh, you found this information helpful and I will see you on the next video. Thank you for listening.